Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance, and in this short video, we're going to be covering the force velocity relationship. So, we're going to basically go through the meaning of it and then some very general implications of the force velocity relationship. So, the easiest way to understand it is to um, visually understand this graph here. So, if we break this down, we have on the vertical axis, axis force, then the horizontal axis here, we have velocity. So at this point of zero velocity, that is um, isometric contraction. So that's when the, we're not even moving. As we go further and further this way, that's concentric. So the velocity is increasing concentrically. And then on this side of here, this is actually negative velocity. So this is um, eccentric contractions. So as we move further and further this way, this is actually faster eccentric contractions. So the easiest way to understand this uh, is to think of a compound movement like a squat and um, and think of your one your one rep max. So your absolute one rep max of a back squat, for example, is going to lie somewhere here. So you go down in the squat and you come up as fast as you possibly can and it's going to move very slowly because it's so close to uh, your limits. So the force is going to be very high somewhere up here. There's still some velocity but it's gonna be very low. And then if, if we then put 50% uh, of our one rep max on the bar, and then did a squat and squat it as fast as we possibly could, we're probably gonna be somewhere around here. So the force isn't gonna be that high because of the um, lower loads. However, the velocity is gonna be a lot faster because if you think about it, you can move 50% of your one rep max a lot faster than your one rep max. If we then put 10% of our one rep max on the bar, it's going to be somewhere around here on the curve. It's going to be much faster, so much higher velocity if we go as fast as we can. However, the force is going to be a lot greater because it's such a low load. If we then take that one rep max and we add 10 or 20 percent on onto that, maybe 10 percent, so over our one rep max, and we then basically um, try to squat that, we can probably there will be a point in the lift where in the squat where we can't push through. However, that point that we can't push through, we can actually probably hold that for um, a, a small amount of time before we then can't hold it any longer. Even though we're not moving the bar, we can hold it in a single position, um, a load that's greater than our one rep max. If we then move into the eccentric portion, so we're talking about this part of the force velocity curve, we can actually produce more force eccentrically than we can concentrically or isometrically. Um, so if we then load our one rep max up um, another maybe uh, maybe 20 to 30 percent of what we our one rep max is and then we unrack it from the bar from the rack and then we basically although it's above our one rep max and we're not going to be able to lower ourselves down and come back up we may still be able to lower ourselves down under control. So if we load, let's say, just 10% above our one rep max and we then slow it, lower it down as slow as we possibly can, we're going to be somewhere around here. So the force is going to be extremely high because the load is so uh, heavy. However, the velocity is going to be um, fairly slow if we go as slow as we can. But it's not going to be so slow because it's so heavy. It's not going to be so slow that we're uh, not moving it. So we're still going to lower ourselves down as slow as possible. If we then put maybe 140% of our one rep max on the bar and we did the same thing, we can try and lower it as slow as we possibly can, but we're not going to be able to control it very well because it's so it's so heavy. So it's going to be somewhere around here. So we're going to produce huge amounts of force, however, and then the velocity is going to increase just because of the um, extremely high loading. So that gives a basic picture of it, and we don't only have to think of um, basically barbell lifts in this regard. We can also think of something like, let's say, a medicine ball throw. So if we have a medicine ball throw that weighs uh, one kilo and we throw that as fast as we possibly can and as hard as fast as we possibly can, that's going to be somewhere around here. So the load is only one kilo, it's very light, and we can throw it very fast. However, if we then throw a 10 kilo medicine ball, as fast as we can, we're not going to be able to throw that as fast 
just because of the, the load is heavier. However, the force will be higher. Um, and this basically has implications with regards to training that we can actually target specific areas of the force velocity curve. So if we think of something like a shot put event, that has quite a low load. Um, it has some load. Um, however, we're trying to move that as fast as we possibly can. If we're someone who is a um, pure speed athlete, we don't really actually have to move any load, any external load apart from our body weight. Um, so we want to actually probably train more in this really high velocity end. That's it for this uh, video, guys. You can follow movement and performance on social media. So on Facebook and on Instagram with the details here. And then if you haven't already, you can subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date with the latest informative videos. So on Facebook and Instagram, you'll find these research infographics, which are essentially base, uh, the latest uh, research summarized into these easy to understand graphics so that you can stay up to date with the latest research in sports performance training. Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully you got something out of this video.